Hey guys, Kane and Manley here back at Basin Motorsports. So I obviously made it to round two because this is going to be showing you what round two entailed for the Bitchin' Boot Camp contest. So again, in round one, they were looking for eight contestants and they had you fill out an application, send in some pictures, a little bit about yourself, some of your projects and that, and then you had to wait. So I turned my stuff in about the 18th or so. Now, September 19th, literally the day next to it, I got an email back from the producers. They said, hey, we liked your pictures and that. We want to get some video information from you. So in the round two for the Bitchin' Boot Camp, what they were asking for was you to answer in video form 10 questions about yourself. Now they asked for a video between five and 15 minutes in length answering 10 different questions. Some of the point of the video itself is they wanted to see kind of your personality a little bit and they were hoping that you're gonna be fun and show how good you would be at your job. The contest deadline had 48 to 72 hours to turn in the video. So I immediately got out there in the shop that night after getting the email, printed them all off, wrote down all my answers, and I made this for my round two submission. Hey, Kevin and Dave, my name is Kane and Manley, and I want to welcome you to the humble garage here at Basin Motorsports. I'm 44, I've been a motorsport enthusiast for about 30 years, and I would consider myself a fabricator on any level, probably 20 of those years. So this is my submission for round two. There are 10 rapid fire questions to get the answers to, to tell you why you want to hire me. So the first answer I'm supposed to give you is about what made me decide to go into restoring cars. And the truth of it is, if I take you back in the history, when I was in my early teens, it really wasn't a what made me go into it, it was a who. I had a friend, and that friend had a father that I swore could fix anything. He had a toolbox, now granted, I was a little wee guy, but he had a toolbox that was immaculate. It was huge. It was monstrous. And I swear, no matter what drawer you went into, it was always full of tools. And because of him is what made me really want to go into automotive anything. On a Saturday, you would find us in there. We'd pop open our Mountain Dews because we were teenagers and that was the best stuff ever. But we'd pop open our soda pops and we would work on whatever it was. We always had a car or something. A friend had a 72 Maverick. I didn't have anything at all, but I wanted to learn. My friend's father had a big block in a Chevy truck. My friend's brother had a 68 Camaro with a 454 in it. We were always working on something. So really, if you want to call it a what, it was the family environment that really made me initially get drawn into the automotive restoration we we're always fixing something, always restoring something. And because of that family environment, it just made me fall in love with cars. And I think the cars were really the byproduct of the environment that I was in. So for question two or answer two, I'm supposed to tell you about my favorite accomplishments. What are those favorite accomplishments in the automotive world or environment? And I wanna break this answer up into two pieces. Half of it's gonna be professional and half of it is going to be personal. On a professional level, I was in the automotive OEM realm as a supplier for five years and then I worked for an OEM here in the US in the South at a factory for roughly 10 years. So the favorite accomplishment I had from the OEM realm was that I was initially on a team in a trim group in the factory I worked in. And the three of us were basically charged with building a business plan to bring in a new vehicle it was never created. We initially got six concept sheets. Now imagine that, a complete vehicle, if I gave you six pieces of paper, you have to create a business plan from that. Now out of that, that initial business plan turned into more work and more work and more work. We eventually landed the business from the headquarters in Japan. I'll just tell you it's an, a Japanese automotive company. And out of that, I was charged with the lead engineer to develop the chassis line, which meant I had to build an assembly line literally from a concrete floor and anything was to go. 
I had to concept, build a strategy, and how to assemble basically everything up until the body was married to the chassis. Now this is the truck frame, so the engine came in to uh, frame, all the suspension went on, all the fuel system went on, everything until a body was basically dropped onto the frame. I created that from scratch. Out of 3D, worked with vendors, suppliers, other engineers, I led groups, multi-million dollar budgets, and eventually, well, that turned into the NV van from Nissan. Now you've probably seen these, they've been made for about the last 10 years. They are in multiple variations. You go to high roof, low roof, uh, V6, V8. But if you ever wanted to think, I wonder who ever created that. Half that assembly line to put that van together came from this, this guy and this head. That's where it all started. Now the second piece of that answer is about the personal side of it. Like I said, I've been a motorsport enthusiast for about 30 years, really since I was about 13 or 14. Being 44, I did do it through college, so roughly in college is where I think I picked up a little bit of fabrication or what I would take credit for, how about that? So that's been about 20 years. In that 20 years, I've been probably building up to what I would consider my halo car, the things that I would want people to know that I built my health, and that is this. This behind me is a wide body 1980 Ford Mustang that is called the Wide Fox. I'm going to show you this later on, kind of give you some details on it, but this car itself is probably my favorite accomplishment in the automotive realm from a personal side. This was a three year build that took a Craigslist $700 car that I found, completely stripped it out and built it to what you see here. This took me three years to build, and I can tell you the, the accomplishment from the build itself. I remember two things. One was the first time I got the engine to fire, and two was the first time driving it, because this car is like nothing I'd ever built or driven before, and those two things were just sweet. I, I can't even tell you how much it was, but from a personal side and a professional side, it's about building from scratch, and that's my personal piece right there. Okay, so the toughest job I've ever done is again going to be the wide box. Now what makes this thing really interesting is that this was again a $700 car off Craigslist. And prior to this, I actually had a 92 Ford Mustang that was rear-ended by a nice couple, or a nice family I should say, out of Sacramento, California. I had worked for uh, about seven months restoring the 92 that I got and they were got so enamored with some snow at a, a cars and coffee event they ended up hitting the rear end of the 92 and basically crushing it uh, one side of it was all the way crushed up into the tire well made it so the doors really didn't open and the car was completely scrapped so i ended up taking the drivetrain out of it it was a v8 with a five speed efi all that 8.8 .8 rear end five lug uh, everything else there and so I ended up taking everything usable out of that 92 and I put it into this 80. All right, so here's the V8 into this. Now, what makes this interesting is that every piece in there is a factory piece other, other than the small touches here, like some upgraded caster camper plates and that. But the front fascia itself is OEM. I did some restoration work on that, some paint. Obviously the green is vinyl wrap. This is the V8 out of the 92. And going into the 80, the thing I really wanted to focus on here was the restoration piece of it. So everything there is factory that I could reuse. So all the wiring, I ended up taking the wiring apart and stripping out any circuit I did not need. So half of that harness was taken out circuit by circuit. Now again, this is called the Wide Fox because it's a three inch wide body piece. So each side is three inches wider, so it's approximately six inch wider than a stock Fox body. Upgraded lights with Demon Eye driving light and those are LED. And again, this is vinyl wrap. So it's a color change vinyl wrap that I did myself. I ended up taking a class last year to be able to do this and then everything else is there. Again, sunroof was already there, but other than some upgraded seats in that, this car should mimic, um, should be mimic a 1980 that nobody should recognize how much is done differently outside of the, the flares and the tires. Now the White Fox is rolling on 18 by 10 5 rows Pretorias. They're running a 315 BFG on each corner. 
Now to fit a 315 tire, which think about that, that is a 12 inch wide tire onto this, took a lot of adjustments with the suspension. Thankfully, there are enough factory pieces in there to make it all work. And like I said, it is a color change vinyl that I learned how to do through a class last year. And this was all done here in the garage. All the paint for the restoration trim was done. All the trim wrap was done, tire letters. Everything there was done by myself. No one has touched another bolt onto this car beyond me. So why is it my toughest job? Because I took a $700 Craigslist car and turned it into a wide body pro touring Mustang called the White Fox. How many hours a week do I dedicate to auto restorations is the next question. And the answer really kind of depends on what else I have going on. Being that I do have a professional job and my wife and I do have a farm itself, it really kind of depends. There are some weeks like when I was uh, pressed for time to get the White Fox done for the vinyl route contest it was in last year. I was probably spending 40 hours a week prepping the surface for the vinyl to go down plus putting the vinyl on. There's been other weeks that I've only done car shows and probably I only spend three to four hours working on something. Uh, if you've seen the pile of parts behind me or beside me right now that I did in the intro, that is another Mustang I have here on the shop that is stripped down. Currently it's about, eh, it has no interior and it's basically most of the body panels are off. It's again going to get a vinyl wrap. It's going to um, get a complete interior redone plus the engine and transmission resealed in that. So again, all that, it could vary. I would say between 30 hours and three hours, depending on what all is going on. So you might ask, what makes me a good auto expert? And the first thing I would say is, I love the history of the automobile. I am a big student of history. So being a student in history, one of my favorite posters, obviously I'm a Mustang fan, is that I have a history of the Mustang poster here in my garage. You can see behind me, this goes from the original to the current. Now, outside of knowing the history, I like to read old magazines. You ever seen the ads on Craigslist of cleaning out the attic? I'm the guy that goes and buys all those magazines. I love reading about history, the trends that were there, everything from the past, the history of it. The history can tell us about the future if you pay attention. You're probably asking yourself, what is going to make this guy fit in at Ken Digga Designs? The truth of it is, I really like the old handyman adage, the jack of all trades, master of none. I can bring it all to Ken Digga Designs. Whether you're looking for assembly, disassembly, fabrication, paint, vinyl, or even somebody that could go beyond the garage and do budgeting, scheduling, planning, strategy, or even some rough napkin sketches. I'm going to be the guy that can do it all. In these lean times of finding the all around employee, I will be that employee. I can do it all. And when I can't, boy, howdy, I'm going to learn how to do it. So how would I describe my personality? Well, I'm a fun loving guy. I like having fun at work, but when deadlines are there and you got to get them done, I get really focused and we will make the target. So how would my friends and coworkers describe my car affliction? Well, I'd say they probably think I'm pretty passionate. As my wife said earlier on the phone, hey, make sure you tell them sometimes I feel like a shop widow. Maybe that's not a good impression. But really cars, cars are probably the thing I think about every day. I'm very passionate about building cars, obviously something like this, restoration, and even the new stuff coming out. Uh, a lot of things my friends don't know, well, a lot of them do know that I've been on YouTube for 10 years, almost 10 years making car videos, whether it's building stuff, uh, answering questions, tech questions and that. I've been out there for 10 years on this side of the camera, answering and building stuff. So they probably say, you must like cars. I do, I like cars a lot. So you might be asking yourself, how would I sell myself as a car expert? And he said, go ahead, gush on yourself if you want to talk a little junk. I don't know that I really have to make up a lot of stories or elaborate too much. Let me tell you a little bit of my history. I told you I, when I was about 13 or 14, we worked on cars in my friend's garage with his father. Now outside of that, 
when I got into high school, in order to earn car part money, I worked at auto parts stores. I took two years of tech school in high school at a career trade center for automotive. So you can imagine I learned basically really the basics of how to take apart stuff. And one class, the final grade, is I had to rebuild a small block Chevy all the way through balance and blueprint and it had to run. Let's just say no rods came out the side. So beyond that I did, like I said, I worked at auto parts stores behind the counter. I learned there was no 83 Corvette. Try to find an alternator for that guys. It doesn't exist. Beyond that, I went to engineering school because I loved cars. I became a mechanical engineer and I went through Formula SAE for the last two years. I was an engine leader and out of that, when I was graduating college, in my head, in my notebook, I still have proof, I designed a variable length intake based on RPM to maximize torque and horsepower. Do you know who came up with that in real production? Koenigsegg. Look it up. Came out of here. I can prove it. I should get a dollar for that or something, right? Maybe not. In fact, how I sell myself an expert is I love the history of it and every day I want to talk cars. So if you like to talk cars every day, dial me up. We can talk about cars. It's not just Mustangs, Camaros, Corvettes, Fiats. They're all there. I love them all. Let's talk about it. So for the last one, Dave and Kevin, I'm supposed to tell you why you should hire me at Kindigit Designs. Now you're going to watch a lot of videos of submissions of people telling you how great they are and how great they can do everything and how they'll be the best model employee. I'm going to blow your mind for a second. It's Friday night. Right now, you're about 30 miles from me. Tomorrow, you're going to probably see this down at the Benefit for the Basin Show. Hopefully you had the tri-tip and tomorrow I'm going to ask you, how was the tri-tip? When you watch this video, you're going to stop for a second and look at each other and go, how did that guy know we had tri-tip? Everybody has a tri-tip. It's good. Hope you enjoyed it. I want you guys to take this away. I'm honestly going to tell you, I'm not going to be the best fabricator walking in the door. I'm not going to be the best at paint. I'm not going to be the best at vinyl or disassembly or reassembly and that. I am organized. I'm focused. I do want a career in the automotive realm. I've worked OEM from building them from sheet metal, rolls of sheet metal, all the way to a running and driving vehicle. I can work the paper side, the budgets, sales, marketing, social media. I don't want to come in there and just be the guy in the shop, the new guy in the shop. I want to be the one that walks in and gives you the full package. I want you to feel every day that that guy was the best hire we've made in a long time. I will bring it all. I will bring you everything I have because my goal is to every day to learn something I didn't know, to get better at something I do know, and to give you the best every single day. So tomorrow when I walk up to you, stick out my hand and say, hey guys, I just filmed my video for round two of the bitchin' boot camp. You guys are going to watch this video later on and go, we met that guy, our future employee. Man, that was pretty cool. So that's it. We'll see you in Salt Lake City at the shop. And at the end when you say, we'd like to hire you. I can't wait. See you next time. So again, some of the things you're looking for was your biggest accomplishment, your toughest job, and a simple direct question of why should they even hire you? So after I turned that video in, I didn't know how far I was going to get. I was on pins and needles. I was like, wow, man, I made round two. So would I make it to round three? I didn't know. Now, point of note here, uh, there was a show in Klamath Falls, Oregon, where roughly I lived called Benefit for the Basin. Now, Dave Kindig and Kev Dog, or Kevin Sheely, they were actually a guest at this show. So they were going to be 30 miles from my home. And while I was filming this, they were actually at a dinner at that show, that car show. So one of the things I pointed out in there was that I was going to talk to them tomorrow. I had filmed round two. And when I went to the show the next day, 
I actually did stop real quick, shake both their hands, say hey, and say, hey guys, I submitted my video for round two. Now, I will tell you this, they were probably pretty taken aback because I was probably one of the first people in real life to even mention the show itself or anything else. So they really didn't have a lot to say and I didn't give them any time to do it. It's kind of like, hey, my name's Kanan, shake your hands. I sent in my round two submission for Bitch and Boot Camp. Hope to see you guys down at the shop in Salt Lake. They kind of looked at each other like, all right. And I skedaddled. I didn't want to ruin it or anything else just to drop my name a little bit and I moved on. So like I said, at this point I didn't know how far I was gonna get so I was in waiting. Now you're asking yourself, did he make it to round three? Well, I'm gonna leave you guys in a lurch and you're gonna have to wait to find out. Now at this point, if you're concerned trying to get to round three, if you're not already subscribed, you're gonna have to subscribe and hit the notifications so that you know if or when I drop round three out there, you guys will be notified. So hopefully you've enjoyed this, seeing what it took from the first video submission for Bitch and Bootcamp, which is gonna be a new show on the Motor Trend streaming service on their app in 2020. And that's it from Basin Motorsports. Kate and Manley is out.